Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you going today? Uh, we are going to continue factorising. So our title for today is Factorising Part 3. Factorising Part 3. So the trick or the pattern we're going to look at is something called factorising by grouping. Factorising by grouping. So let's first jump into one example. Example one. The verb again is to factorise, to find the highest common factor so you can write it as products of factors. So part A, the question is factorise x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. So you'll notice here in this expression that we have four terms. Our first term is x squared. Our second term is plus a positive 2x. Our third term is a positive 3x. And our fourth term, our last term, is positive 6. So the trick with factorising by grouping is to group these four uh, x terms into pairs of two. So if you consider the first group of two terms, x squared plus 2x, and then your second group of two terms, 3x plus 6. So consider your first group of two terms, x squared plus 2x. So factorise that first group first. So comparing x squared and 2x, what is the highest common factor between them? Well, the commonality between x squared and 2x is 1x. So you take 1x out, and then you ask yourself, well, x times what gives me x squared in the first term? Well, x times x gives me x squared. And then the second term, you're looking for x times what gives me a positive 2x. Well, x times positive 2 gives me a positive 2x. Now you look at this second group of two terms, the 3x plus 6, and you want to factorise 3x plus 6 like we do normally. So ask yourself, what's in common between 3x and 6? Well, 3 is the highest common factor, so we add 3, and then you pull out a common factor of 3, so what's left over? 3 times what gives me 3x? 3 times x gives me 3x. 3 times what gives me 6? It's positive 6, so 3 times a positive 2 gives me a positive 6. And then you look for any other commonalities between, now we have two terms. This is our first term, and then this is our second term. So we factorise like we normally do, look at what's in common between the two terms, which is brackets x plus 2, because both of these terms have brackets x plus 2. And then whatever's left over, you put it in brackets. So if you take out the factor of x plus 2 in the first term, what's left over is just a single x. So we can put x in. And then you look at the second term. Once you take out the common factor of brackets x plus 2, what's left over is a positive 3. So you write, write positive 3. So to factorise x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6, your final answer is x plus 2 times x plus 3. Let's do another example. So part b, you have x squared plus 3x minus 5x minus 15. Again, we have four terms. x squared is the first term, positive 3x is your second term. Third term is minus 5x. Don't forget to take the negative sign as well in front of the coefficient. And your fourth term is a negative 15. So there's four terms. So the trick is group them into pairs of two terms. So your first set of terms, your first pair, sorry, is x squared plus 3x. And your second pair is minus 5x minus 15. So in the first pair, factorise out what you can in the first pair. So what's in common between x squared and 3x? Well, 1x is in common. You take out that common factor of x and you put brackets. And then you ask yourself, x times what gives me x squared? x times x gives me x squared. And then you go, x times what gives me a 3x? x times a positive 3 gives me a positive 3x. And then you factorise out the second group. So what's in common between minus 5x and minus 15? Well, for starters, they both have a negative sign. So negative is in common. 
What else is the highest common factor? Well, this one has an X, this one doesn't, so X is not a common factor. On the other hand, 5 and 15, the highest common factor between them is 5, so you can pull out a factor of negative 5. So then you write brackets and then you fill in what's left over. So negative 5 times what gives me a negative 5x. So you're comparing it, what's different? It's missing an x. So inside your bracket, you write x. Next you go, okay, comparing negative 5 and negative 15. Negative 5 times what gives me negative 15? Well, for starters, 5 times 3 is 15. Now you've got to be careful of your signs. Because this is a negative, a negative times a positive gives me a negative. So inside your bracket, you want a positive 3. And then you compare your two terms because now you have one term, which is x brackets x plus 3, and your second term is minus 5 brackets x plus 3. So then you go, well, what's in common between those two terms? Well, the brackets x plus 3 is in common between those two terms. What is left over? You put in brackets. What's left over in the first term is 1x. What's left over in the second term is a minus 5. So you factorize that as well. Let's do another one. Part C. Uh, we want to factorize x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6. So you'll notice so far that this technique with factorizing by grouping, they all have four terms. They always start with four terms so that we can split them up into pairs, pairs of two terms, factorize each pair, and then look at what's in common in the results. So, <coughs> again, for this part C, we have one, two, three, four terms. Let's group them up into pairs of two terms, like that. So our first term is x squared plus 3x. Ask yourself, what is in common between x squared and 3x? 1x is in common. So you pull that x out. You write brackets so you can find the remainders. x times x gives me x squared. x times a positive 3 gives me a positive 3x. Factorize your second grouping. So negative 2x with a negative 6. Be careful of the signs. Take the number, take the sign in front of it as well. So here we have both in common a negative. 2 and 6 have a highest common factor of 2. Uh, they both don't all have an x in it. So x is not a common factor. So then you ask yourself what's left over. So ne comparing negative 2 and negative 2x, it's missing an x. Comparing negative 2 and negative 6. Well, 2 times 3 gives me 6. So I'm missing a 3 here. And again, be careful of your negative and positive signs. Because this is a negative, you pulled out a negative, then negative 2 times a positive 3 gives me a negative 6. Then you look at your two terms so far. What's in common between them? The brackets x plus 3 is in common. So what is left over? The x and the minus 2 is left over.